Welcome to Daily News Simplified, an answer to what, why and how of newspaper reading. Today, we are going to discuss the important issues appearing in the Hindu newspaper, dated 17th March 2018. Let's begin. On page number 1, the news reads, TDP moves no confidence motion after quitting NDA. In this news, we need to understand this concept of no confidence motion, as questions have been asked previously in UPSC prelims examination and how this no confidence motion differs from a censor motion. Let's see. As you can see, a question was asked in the year 2014 regarding no confidence motion. So in this respect, let us first understand about Article 75.3 of the Indian Constitution. The article reads, the Council of Ministers shall be collectively responsible to the House of the People or Lok Sabha. Thus, the Council of Ministers remains in office as long as it enjoys the confidence of Lok Sabha. And the word confidence here means having the requisite majority on the floor of the house. Thus, this no confidence motion effectively checks this requisite majority or whether the government in power has the requisite majority on the floor of the house of Lok Sabha. And the moment a government expresses a lack of confidence, then the government is constitutionally bound to resign and in order to ascertain this confidence, the rules of procedure and conduct of business in Lok Sabha provides for moving a motion to this effect which is called no confidence motion. A motion of no confidence once admitted has to be taken up within 10 days of leave being granted. Thus, this 10 days of leave being granted becomes a necessary condition to move a motion of no confidence. And a notice of no confidence motion can also be withdrawn by members concerned by sending by letters of withdrawal signed by all signatories to the notice for such no confidence. Another important thing to remember regarding no confidence is that Raj Sabha is not empowered to entertain a motion of no confidence because under article 75 clause 3 the council of ministers shall be collectively responsible to the house of the people and not to the council of states that is Raj Sabha. Thus, Raj Sabha with respect to no confidence motion is not empowered to entertain a motion of no confidence. Now looking at this question which appeared in 2014, it reads, consider the following statements regarding a no confidence motion in India. First, there is no mention of a no confidence motion in the constitution of India. As we have seen under article 75 clause 3, the word no confidence motion has not been mentioned. Hence, this statement is correct. Second. A motion of no confidence can be introduced in the Lok Sabha only. We know that this is a correct statement because specifically in Article 75.3, it provides that the Council of Ministers shall be collectively responsible to the House of the People. Hence, the answer would be, it says, with of the statements given above is a correct. Then, thus, both 1 and 2 are correct. I hope any further question, if it appears in your prelims examination regarding no confidence motion, you will be confidently able to solve such a question. Now with respect to censor motion, it is a motion to express strong disapproval or harsh criticism of the government or any of its policies. A censor motion must set out the grounds or charges on which it is based. Whereas in the no confidence motion, as we saw, no particular reason were required or no particular grounds or charges was required in case of no confidence motion. Whereas in case of censure motion, it must set out the grounds or charges on which it is based. Censure motion can be moved against the council of minister or an individual minister and no leave of the house is required to move a censure motion. Thus in the case of no confidence motion, if a no confidence motion is passed, it leads to the compulsory resignation of the council of ministers or it leads to dissolution of the government. Whereas censure motion does not lead to dissolution of government. Thus this news becomes important as a straightaway questions in the year 2014 has been asked. Another question which was asked in the year 2015, there is a parliamentary system of government in India because Lok Sabha is elected directly by the people, parliament can amend the constitution, Raj Sabha cannot be dissolved and council of ministers is responsible to the Lok Sabha. We know that under article 75.3, council of ministers is responsible to the Lok Sabha. Hence, this is the correct answer. This you see. This parliamentary system of government and issues related to parliamentary system of government including no confidence motion becomes an important topic from your 
pre point of view hence this news becomes important to understand the concept of no confidence motion without going into the politics of what is happening around with this let's move on to the next news now the next news appears on page number 8 the news reads the long fight against tb this news talks about revised national tuberculosis control program that is rntcp and how this program helps in controlling tb so in this news let us understand about tuberculosis its various kinds including mdr that is multi drug resistant tb dots and nixe as you can see a question was asked in the year 2012 with respect to mdr tb the question read what do you understand by the term multi drug resistant tb what measures would you advocate for its containment and what are the implication of its spread in the community so let us understand in this article about tuberculosis its various kinds dots nixe and this particular scheme of the government of india so tb that is tuberculosis is caused by a bacteria mycobacterium tuberculosis so a simple prelims question can be formed with respect to tb that is whether it is a bacteria or whether it is a virus you know that this is not a virus and this is an example of bacteria tb most often affect the lungs and tb is a communicable disease that is it spreads from one person to another through the air so when people with lung tb cough sneeze or spit they propel the tb germs into the air and a person needs to inhale only a few of these germs to become infected as per who that is world health organization one third of world's population has latent tb or passive tb now this latent tb basically means that people have been infected by the tb bacteria but are not yet ill with the disease and cannot transmit the disease it is important to know that people having compromised immune systems such as people living with hiv people having malnutrition or who are infected with diabetes or people who use tobacco on a large scale have a much higher risk of falling ill now in this respect let us also understand about the different type of tb there are basically two type of tb conditions first is latent tb infection which we just mentioned right now and the second is tb disease do you know that tb bacteria can live in the body without making you sick this condition is called latent tb infection people with latent tb infection do not feel sick do not have any symptoms and cannot spread tb bacteria to others now if the tb bacteria becomes active in the body and start multiplying then the person will go from having latent tb infection to be sick with a tb disease and people with tb disease have symptoms and also may spread the bacteria to others now tb bacteria most commonly grow in lungs and cause symptoms such as a bad cough that lasts 3 weeks or longer pain in the chest coughing up blood or sputum that is mucus from deep inside the lungs other symptoms of tb may also include weakness or fatigue weight loss appetite loss chills fever sweating at night etc so these are the symptoms in case of tb now let us understand about mdr tb that is multi drug resistant tb on which a question in the mains was also asked the bacteria that cause tb can develop resistance to the antimicrobial drugs which are used to cure the disease in case of mdr tb tb does not respond to the two most powerful tb drugs namely isoniazid and rifampicin the main reasons for the emerging of mdr tb is mismanagement of tb treatment and person to person transmission also incorrect use of tb drugs use of ineffective tb drugs and premature treatment interruptions may cause the continuation of mdr tb now in this respect let us understand about dots or directly observed treatment short course this dot strategy has been recommended by who that is world health organization it reads dots or directly observed treatment short course is the internationally recommended strategy for tb control that has been recognized as a highly efficient and cost effective strategy dots comprises five components namely sustained political and financial commitment tb can be cured and the epidemic reversed if adequate resources and administrative support for tb are provided diagnosis by quality ensured sputum smears microscopy chest symptomatics examined this way helps to reliably find infectious patients 
स्टैंडर्डाइज शॉर्ट कोर्स एंटी टी ट्रीटमेंट और एस गिवन अंडर डायरेक्ट एंड सपोर्टिव ऑब्जर्वेशन हेल्प्स टू इंश्योर राइट ड्रग्स दैट आर टेकन एट राइट टाइम फॉर द फुल ड्यूरेशन ट्रीटमेंट एंड अ रेगुलर अनइंटरप्टेड सप्लाई ऑफ हाई क्वालिटी एंटी टी ड्रग्स इंश्योर्स दैट अ क्रेडिबल नेशनल टी प्रोग्राम डज नॉट हैव टू टर्न एनी वन अवे एंड फाइनली स्टैंडर्डाइज रिकॉर्डिंग एंड रिपोर्टिंग हेल्प्स टू कीप ट्रैक ऑफ ईच इंडिविजुअल पेशेंट एंड टू मॉनिट ओवरऑल प्रोग्राम परफॉर्मेंस दिस दिस फाइव पॉइंट्स ऑफ डॉट्स बिकम्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड नाउ लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द प्रोग्राम ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया टू रिड्यूस टी बी द प्रोग्राम इज रिवाइज नेशनल ट्यूब्रोकोलॉसिस कंट्रोल प्रोग्राम नाउ इन दिस आर्टिकल द ऑथर टॉक्स अबाउट अ प्रॉपर इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ दिस रिवाइज नेशनल टी बी कंट्रोल प्रोग्राम दिस प्रोग्राम हैज इनिशिएटेड फर्म स्टेप्स टू इट्स डिक्लेयर ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ यूनिवर्सल एक्सेस टू अर्ली क्वालिटी डायग्नोसिस एंड क्वालिटी टी बी केयर फॉर ऑल टी बी पेशेंट्स द प्रॉब्लम विद टी बी इज दैट मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेज आर नॉट रिपोर्टेड प्रॉपरली एंड वंस अ प्रॉब्लम हैज बीन रिपोर्टेड देन इट इज नॉट क्योर्ड सफिशियंटली दस दिस प्रोग्राम एम्स फॉर अर्ली क्वालिटी डायग्नोसिस एज वेल एज प्रॉपर इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ द प्रॉपर क्योर फैसिलिटी द मेन ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस रिवाइज नेशनल टी बी कंट्रोल प्रोग्राम आर to pursue quality dots expansion and enhancement by improving case finding and cure through an effective patient centered approach to reach all patients especially the poor address tb hiv mdr tb and other challenges contribute to health system by strengthening and collaborating with other health programs and general services involve all healthcare providers public non governmental and private sector by scaling up approaches based on public private mix and to enable and promote research for the development of new drugs this these are the objectives of revised national tb control program and in this respect let us also understand about nikshay now nikshay is a web based solution for monitoring tb patients and also to monitor revised national tb program and this web based application of nikshay has been developed by national informatics center that is nic so a prelims question on nikshay can be asked in your upsc examination this we know it is a web based solution to monitor tb patient and has been developed by national informatics center in this news we have understood about tb various kinds of tb that is latent tb and tb disease mdr tb why mdr tb has been caused this revised national tb control program dots that is directly observed treatment short course and about nikshay a prelims as well as a mains question can be formed on tb kinds of tb or mdr tb and the steps taken by government of india to control tb after going through this video analysis you will be able to solve most of the questions which may come in your pre examination with respect to tb with this let's move on to the next news the next news appears on page number 13 here the news reads higher trade deficit pushes up q3 current account deficit to 13.5 billion dollars now in this news the current account deficit rose to 2% of gdp in the december quarter of 2017-18 so in this news it is important to know about current account deficit as a question has already been asked in the year 2014 the question was with reference to balance of payments which of the following constitutes or constitute the current account the options given were balance of trade foreign assets balance of visibles and special drawing rights so first let us understand what this current account deficit includes now this current account is an account consisting of all current transactions of an economy with the rest of the world it mainly includes merchandise exports and imports trade balances invisibles services transfers and income and a sum of these is known as current account balance in this respect it is important to know that when export is greater than import then it amounts to current account surplus and when import is greater than export then it amounts to current account deficit it also means that we are importing more than what we are exporting and here in this case we are exporting more than what we are importing hence the difference between current account surplus as well as current account deficit so coming back to this question which was asked in the year 2014 
with reference to balance of payments which of the following constitutes or constitute the current account balance of trade yes it is foreign assets no balance of invisibles yes special drawing rights no as you can see in this table both balance of trade that is trade balance and invisibles have been included in the current account thus for this the correct answer would be c and in this respect it is also important to understand about capital account capital account is an account consisting of capital transaction of an economy with the rest of the world it includes external assistance that is assistance or loan from foreign countries external commercial borrowings that is ecb short term credit banking capital net of which also includes non resident deposits foreign investment including fdi as well as portfolio investment and the sum of these items are called capital account balance thus we see the difference between current account and capital account similarly the questions which was asked on current account a same question can also be asked on capital account transaction and also in capital account transaction when capital inflow is greater than capital outflows then it amounts to capital account surplus similarly when capital outflows is greater than capital inflow then it amounts to capital account deficit as you see in this more capital is inflowing in the country as compared to the outflow of capital whereas in this there is more capital outflow from the country as compared to incoming capitals thus both this concept of capital account surplus as well as capital account deficit becomes important including this concept of current account surplus as well as current account deficit hence this topic becomes very important from your prelims point of view in the economic section of upsc with this let's move on to the next news the next news appears on page number 14 the news reads rec introduces dollar denominated bonds now this rec stands for rural electrification corporation as you can read here this rec that is rural electrification corporation has issued dollar denominated bonds now it becomes important to understand about this dollar denominated bonds with respect to upsc prelims examination now this topic becomes important from your prelims point of view so in this a dollar bond is a us denominated bond which is traded outside the jurisdiction of united states of america in such kind of bonds along with the principal amount any coupon payments from the bond are also paid in us dollars coupon payment is the payment which is paid on the rate of interest of bond suppose if the price of bond is 100 dollars and coupon rate is 10% then the rate of interest paid on the bond would be 10 dollars so this is what is coupon payment now such issue of dollar denominated bonds helps to attract us investors and hedge currency risk there is less currency risk on dollar bonds for us based investors looking to access international debt markets as compared to purchase of non us denominated bonds thus this topic becomes important from your prelims point of view as in previous years a question on masala bond was asked so a similar question can be asked related to dollar denominated bonds hence it becomes important to know about dollar denominated bonds as we know dollar denominated bonds are us denominated bonds which is traded outside usa and whose principal amount as well as coupon payments are paid in us dollars with this i hope you would have understood about dollar denominated bonds with this let's move on to the next news now we move to next news and it appears on page number 3 here the news reads 18 model villages to come up in arunachal pradesh in this news the union ministry of home affairs has sanctioned a special package to create 18 model villages in arunachal pradesh along the china border these 18 villages have been selected to be developed as model villages by the department of border management which comes under the administrative control of ministry of home affairs so a prelims question can be asked with respect to department of border management and it can be asked that it comes under which of the following ministry different options may be given and the correct answer would be ministry of home affairs these model villages that is these 18 model villages will have all the basic amenities and the development through this package shall be focused on sectors like health water electricity infrastructure etc all the things which are essential for any society and it will effectively also help in providing employment opportunities to the 
local residents of the region. According to the Home Ministry, funds provided under special package program will be separate from the regular border area development program. Under this border area development program, funds are provided annually to such border areas. Thus, in this respect, let us also understand about border area development program. Now this border area development program was started in the year 1986-87 for balanced development of border areas for states bordering Pakistan namely Jammu and Kashmir, Punjab, Rajasthan and Gujarat. Hence you should know which are the states which borders Pakistan. The states are Jammu and Kashmir, Punjab, Rajasthan and Gujarat. This program was further revamped and its coverage was extended to states on the eastern border with Bangladesh. Seeing the success of this BADP program to manage areas along the borders, this program was further extended to state bordering Myanmar. This was done in the year 1997. In 1998-99, the states bordering China were also included under BADP. And in the year 1999-2000, this BADP was further extended to include states bordering Nepal and Bhutan. So again, a prelims question may be formed where it can be asked that BADP program extends to states which borders along which of the following countries. Hence, the BADP program extends to states bordering Bangladesh, states bordering Myanmar, states bordering China, states bordering Nepal and Bhutan, as well as states bordering Pakistan. The main objective of this BADP program is to meet the special needs of people living in remote and inaccessible areas situated near the border. A question on border management was asked in the mains examination of year 2016. The question read, border management is complex task due to difficult terrain and hostile relationship with some countries. Elucidate the challenges and strategies for effective border management. Hence, border area development program is therefore an effective strategy for border management. And the special package provided to Arunachal Pradesh will further help in developing those difficult terrains and providing basic amenities for proper development of such of such difficult and hostile terrains along the borders. Thus, this topic of border management becomes an important topic from security point of view under the UPSC examination. With this, let's move on to the next news. The next news appears on page number seven. It reads not for new vehicle scrap policy. In this news, in a high level meeting at Prime Minister's office, it has, has approved the disposal of commercial vehicles which are more than 20 years old and this decision shall be implemented from 1st April 2020. And in this respect, the government is also planning to reduce GST on commercial vehicles. Earlier, the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways had made a concept note on a scheme known as Voluntary Vehicle Fleet Modernization Program or VVMP and this program was also aimed at scrapping of old commercial vehicles. So what shall be the impact of such a move? Let us understand. This decision if implemented from 1st April 2020 will effectively remove lakhs of such commercial vehicle which are plying on roads right now and this move will help in significantly reducing vehicular pollution as all these old vehicles are built on older technology and thereby they cause more pollution as compared to the modern vehicles. And vehicular pollution mainly comprises of nitrous oxides that is nitrogen monoxide, nitrogen dioxide etc, sulfur oxides, hydrocarbons and particulate matters. So all these cause much damage to the environment and also pertains significant health hazards mostly in cities because of large density of vehicles in cities. And with respect to scrapping of old commercial vehicles, the government also intends to provide fair value for scrap of such old commercial vehicles. And in this regard, the Ministry of Steel will soon come up with guidelines having recommendation for scrapping centers. Thus this topic becomes one of the important policies of the government with respect to removing of old commercial vehicles. And a question on prelims can be asked on this particular topic and also this topic becomes important as it pose health hazard because of environmental pollution due to all these harmful gases. This part comes within the topic of environment under your UPSC syllabus and questions on vehicular pollution 
can be asked in your prelims exam. With this, we come to an end to today's newspaper. Let's move on to the question for the day.